I want to start with a few uh, generalizations and then go to some specifics on uh, government policies towards religious communities. Not so much, uh, I won't be discussing so much the very wide variety of religious life in the countries of the former Soviet Union because it's a, a, a topic for an entire conference or three in and of itself. Uh, because you know many of the world's major religions and many of the world's, world's minor religions are represented, you know, speaking numerically, of course, um, in uh, in the former Soviet Union. Um, and as far as public influence or influence in society, a lot of times that depends on the uh, the government attitude towards a given religious group. Uh, but of course, sometimes the activities of a of religious community in society as a whole um, obviously also influences the, the role that it plays. Um, Soviet, uh, post-Soviet ideolo ideology, which obviously emphasized atheism and carefully controlled religious life, um, has also uh, left a big legacy in the countries of the former Soviet Union. Um, and most people in um, that part of the world, like many, where m many other places, are searching for new belief systems, uh, which of course include religion prominently. Um, Post-Soviet governments often view the majority religion as an ally, for example, the Moscow Patriarchate of the Russian Orthodox Church, um, or as, or and or as potential allies. Or, and rivals, um, for example, Islam in Central Asia. Um, as a result of all these factors, uh, post-Soviet governments try to control religion uh, in various ways, which, I'll, which is the main topic I'll be discussing, through registration regulations, religion laws, and extremism laws, um, which also, and in addition, within each uh, of the major religions, they have set up um, or encourage the development of uh, communities which are officially approved and others which are not. So it's, it's a rather large uh, topic um, and I'll, I'll try to um, address as many aspects of it as I can in the limited uh, time that I have. Um, I'll take a couple of countries as examples uh, and that those are Belarus, Russia, Tajikistan, <coughs> Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. Um, I'll first talk a little bit about registration policies. Um, in, uh, for example, Belarus, uh, the religion law sets up three categories of religious uh, groups and sets up a very complex r registration process. Um, in the registration processes in all these countries require that those who want to establish uh, a religious community uh, supply the state with very detailed personal information which in the post-Soviet context uh, gives rise to considerable um, apprehension. Um, um, while many groups in uh, Belarus and uh, have managed to register, um, the, it is illegal for an unregistered religious community to function at all. In other words, if you are not, have, if you have not publicly declared yourself to the state, then your activities are viewed as illegal. Um, in Russia, it's a little different. Um, while uh, you can function as an unregistered religious group and you have certain rights, for example, to hold worship services, you cannot uh, own property, uh, hire religious uh, leaders uh, on a formal level, and uh, publish literature. If you're registered, which you then must do every year, then you have much wider uh, uh, rights. Possibly the most restrictive registration procedures that I know of exist in Tajikistan, which were established only in 2009. And for example, uh, for me, one of the most prominent aspects of that is if you're among the uh, 10 adult citizen f uh, founders, you have to present a certificate from local officials that you have lived in that specific area for at least five years and during that, the course of that time, you have always held the same views uh, for which have led you to establish this religious group. Um, in addition, the charter must specify all aspects of your activity and you must register every year. 
and for all of these countries as well if you are found to violate provisions um, of, of registration, you, you know, there are various kinds of penalties ranging from fines and in some cases to imprisonment depending on the, the, way, the, the legal uh, terms. Um, in Uzbekistan, also uh, unregistered religious activity is illegal uh, and if you violate um, that provision, you may face huge fines, police raids, and possible arrests. Um, Kazakhstan, I, w I won't go into, but if people have questions about that, I can try to answer that. Um, on, in Russia, for the turning to the um, diff practical difficulties of, of registration, um, if you have to register not only on the local level, but also at the national level, uh, and you have to do this every year. And while most religious groups in Russia have managed to register, um, some have not, uh, and particularly they've had difficulty on the local level. Um, in some cases, there, there are charges that the uh, Russian Orthodox Church uh, or whatever is the majority religion in a given uh, area puts pressure on the local officials to, to not allow in other, other groups. Um, in Turkmenistan, even though the viol uh, penalties for violating registration were removed from the administrative code to the criminal from the criminal code to the administrative code, nevertheless the penalties for violating uh, those um, provisions remain the same. In other words, you can be imprisoned if you are found to, to violate those those terms. Um, in Uzbekistan. Um, the government has closed down 3,000 of the 5,000 mosques that existed in the early 1990s. Um, and several mosques, particularly in the Firgana Valley, which is the country's most religiously active area, uh, have been refused registration even though they meet all the legal requirements. Um, and as far as the penalties for uh, violating um, various provisions of religion laws. Um, there, I can give some, some specific, specific examples. For example, in Turkmenistan, there's a Pentecostal pastor who last year was sentenced to four years of imprisonment um, on false charges of swindling. And both his family and members of his congregation were brave enough under Turkmen conditions to um, say in court that the, those charges were false. Um, in Uzbekistan, which, uh, by the way, has the largest number of political and religious prisoners, has more p prisoners than all the other post-Soviet countries combined, uh, and has an estimated 5,000 uh, prisoners, um, b uh, who have either, most of whom have either not practiced Islam the way the government thinks they should, or are charged um, on uh, for belonging to allegedly extremist groups, political groups, some of which have a religious linkage. Uh, but none of these charges are ever proven, nor has it been proven that these people advocate or have engaged in violence, for, for in the most part. I mean, there are a few exceptions, of course. Um, but as far as um, uh, violating um, just provisions under the religion law which do not uh, involve uh, being involved in so-called uh, extremist groups, um, 49 people were sentenced in la last year alone. For example, in April of last year, three women were convic convicted to minimum six-year terms for allegedly threatening the constitutional order, and that consisted of them teach privately teaching young women about Islam. Um, and uh, the def other defendants from among the group of 30 who were originally arrested, uh, some were reportedly threatened with rape if they did not testify, and some of them later disappeared. No one knows where they are. Um, uh, Non-Muslim groups are also subjected to very severe restrictions. Uh, one of the largest Protestant churches in Tashkent was raided, and uh, eight church members were arrested and detained. Not, they didn't get sent long sentences, but they, but they were briefly detained. Um, 
how am I doing on, on time? Um, as far as um, provisions of religion laws, uh, just to give you an idea of the, the legal constraints that all religious groups operate on in, in some of these countries. Um, in Belarus, foreign citizens are not allowed to lead religious activities. Um, your religious activity is restricted to the geographic area in which you are registered. Um, you, you, unless you're um, registered, you cannot train clergy um, or uh, distribute print um, or import religious material. In Kazakhstan, I do want to mention Kazakhstan briefly because they uh, were considering a very restrictive religion law, but the Constitutional Court overturned that. However, the Kazakh uh, parliamentary calendar has set late uh, this year as a time to reconsider the, uh, the amendments to that religion law, so it may, in fact, pass again. Um, and that would have also involved, for example, um, making unregistered religious activity illegal. In Russia, um, the a very important trend that, that Russia helped set in motion was to de designate certain religions as more traditional in the country than, than others. So four religions have been designated in the preface to the religion law, um, Russian Orthodoxy, Islam, Judaism, and Buddhism. Um, even though this has no legal footing, um, nevertheless, various Russian officials don't understand the distinction between the preface to religion law and the law itself, and therefore they act on that basis and view with suspicion all other religious groups. And in fact, if you're orthodox and the wrong variety of orthodox, you can also have lots of problems. Um, I also want to talk a little bit more about Tajikistan's uh, religion law. Tajikistan, which as you know, is a northern neighbor of Afghanistan and a particularly um, fragile state, as the uh, International Crisis Group just pointed out yesterday, um, that, for example, the mosques are under particularly um, strict regulation. Um, they set population quotas for the various sizes of mosques, and if, they're, if the, the government thereby, thereby decides that there are too many mosques in an area with too, too few people, um, or too many people, depending on the criteria set up, um, then the mosque is not allowed uh, to be built. And um, if there are too many mosques and they don't have uh, official approval, the government closes them down or simply tears them down, as it has done repeatedly um, this year and last year. Um, the law also bans private religious education, which is something I should mention is another frequent feature of, of religion laws in this part of the world, um, or it, it, at least it very severely restricts that. That's also true in Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. Um, I wanted also briefly to turn to how extremism laws are, are used in, in various of these countries to restrict legitimate religious activity. Um, one of the key features of the extremism laws in most uh, post-Soviet countries, with the odd exception of Turkmenistan, is that um, it does not require advocacy or use of violence. Uh, that's not even a criterion uh, under extremism. Um, although, and um, in um, the, gov the various um, interstate uh, agencies have also um, banned, ver decided that various uh, Muslim, largely Muslim groups are terrorist. Um, some of them, in fact, are. However, many of them are not. And the criteria for, for banning is ver are very vague and um, often um, eases the way for, for arrests uh, of people on either fake uh, charges or actual charges of belonging to these groups. The point being that membership in a banned group is the criterion for arrest. It's not a specific action that's undertaken. Um, and also, Russia has set up a very large uh, list of so-called extremist literature, uh, which includes the writing of Said Nursi, um, and uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, Scientologists were recently removed from, from this list. Uh, there's now an ongoing debate as to whether or not the Zions of the Protocol, the pro 
what is it called, the protocol of the elders of Zion should or should not be included on this list. Um, and uh, again, you, you face criminal charges and prison sentences if you're found to distribute and own this literature. Um, anyway, um, there's a lot more to be said, um, and uh, I've run out of time. Thank you. <laughs>